the hulking armored mine clearer lurches into an open field. Over 40 tons, it spews exhaust, its tracks struggling across the muddy ground. Following close behind the mine clearance team called Sappers, they advance deliberately on the hunt for deadly explosives. This is delicate work. This was a Russian position, Russian trenches. And now these guys are working through here carefully, methodically, looking for mines, for booby traps, and even Ukrainian ordnance that was fired at the Russians who were here. Last September, a Ukrainian counteroffensive pushed the Russians out of these trenches. Now, Colonel Maxim Melnik's team has been charged with clearing any explosives. They have left many traps behind, and many of our brothers, our sappers, have died, Melnik says. Russia doesn't obey international conventions. They put mines on top of mines, leave booby traps, and use banned mines. Russian and Ukrainian mines are scattered throughout the Eastern Front, making Ukraine one of the biggest minefields in the world. Rockets and other explosives can often fail to detonate when they land, too, all of it posing immense danger to civilians. The sappers of Ukraine's DSNS emergency service, like Edward Harris Semenko, who's a father of a 10 year old daughter, are keenly aware of the danger. It's dangerous for everybody, he says. I wouldn't say we take more risks than others. Everybody is taking risks now. Harris Semenko was demining before the war started. Seeing what Russia has done to his country infuriates him. They are just animals, he says. There's no other way to describe them. He finds and carries an unexploded rocket-propelled grenade to the side. Working day after day all across this country, D-miners know how much they still have left to do. After the war, the soldiers get to go home, but your work will continue for years. We will keep working for decades, Colonel Melnik says. This will go on for decades. Alex Marquardt, CNN in eastern Ukraine.